All right. Luke <coughs> chapter 12. Forgive me. In the meantime, while he's at, we left him having dinner with the Pharisees, and he's rebuking them and the lawyers. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, you can't count them, insomuch that they trolled one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, so he addresses the apostles first. <clears throat> Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Remember, the Pharisees are right there. The people are right there. The disciples are right there. And he turns to them. You see those Pharisees? They're hypocrisy. Jesus does not beat around the bush. He's telling the Pharisees, he's telling the people, he's telling the disciples of their sin. He names, names. For there is nothing covered. Matthew 10, 26, 1 Corinthians 4, 5. That shall not be revealed, neither hid, that shall not be, be known. Listen, when judgment comes, it all come out. You got a secret against somebody, it'll come out. You've been swindling somebody under a lie, it'll come out. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. What's that light? That's Jesus Christ, the great white throne judgment. When he's dealing with the Pharisees, because they're not going to be saved. As a group of people. Individually, yes. But most of them. And that which ye have spoken in the ear and closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. How's that? Politicians will stand before God one day and give an account for all the lies they lied to people. Aren't you glad before the great white throne judgment the Bible records that time has stopped? You have entered eternity. Can you imagine if the clocks were going at the great white throne judgment, every single politician, every single used car salesman, every single uh, mistrusted husband, every uh, wolf that's in, been in the pulpit, are going to give account for everything they said. Matthew tells us that every idle word shall be judged. Everything is going to be spoken at the great white throne judgment. Thank God time has stopped. You know what? When I stand at the, great, and I stand at the judgment seat of Christ, if it's under the blood, it will never be brought up. Only that which is not under the blood. And you know what? You know what in, for the Christian that's saved, it appears as gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. That's it. And then fire is brought to those works. At the great white throne judgment, everything. The books were open. The skits. The, the script. Of the movies. Of the television program. All will be made known. Imagine a two-hour movie. Someone kept on saying their name was somebody who it wasn't. Imagine every religious person will give an account for every message that they gave for Satan. I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, Matthew 10, and after that have no more that they can do. Man can just kill man. And didn't he just call them a bunch of murderers? Chapter 11. He's talking about the Pharisees. They've killed the prophets. They're going to kill the prophets in the book of Acts. But that's it. That's all they can do for you. They can just kill you. If I got killed in the streets for the word of God, I'm just absent from the body present with the Lord. That's all you can do. You can't cast me into hell. But I will forewarn you. Now get this. Matthew 10 is easier to remember. I wish I could remember Luke 12. Fear, I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. And this stupid sticker out there, no fear. That's stupid. Yeah. Fear, now, this is Jesus. If you got a red letter Bible, Mark, this should be bold, but it's not. Fear him which after he has killed, God can kill you. Did you get that? 
Fear him. Verse 4 is the human. Verse 5 is God. Fear him which after he has killed has power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. <coughs> Jesus never preached about hell. No, you ought to take that stupid statement and state that I ought to fear God and what God can do to me. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? Where is that being taken care of? In the temple. Remember he goes in there and knocks over all everything? Who's in charge of that? The Pharisees. We're all about the Pharisees. The Pharisees are allowing the birds to be sold. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. I was just trying to think, how much did that the widow gave two mites, okay? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. You want to try that one? God is recorded in a book somewhere how many hairs you have on your head and the loss of a hair. The Bible says he, he tends the funeral of a bird. Why not record, okay, five hairs came off on the brown comb, on the comb or something. Fear not, therefore. Oh, here's a Peter verse. Ye are more valuable than many sparrows. Mark that down for Peter. Save the whales. No, save your soul. Eat the whales. Oop, I just lost somebody. You know what God told Noah? You know what Paul said when it comes to meat? Be thankful and you can eat it now. I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. You know, I'm not bragging about myself, but Jesus Christ says the angels of God, that's Stanley Hayward. Why do I say that's Stanley Hayward? Because he says, I'm, I'm God. He acknowledges the Father and he acknowledges me. He's not ashamed of me. And sometimes I, I am. I get those moments, and he can't say nothing to the angels. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Imagine that. If that verse is correct, Jesus Christ has a conversation with those who will testify of Jesus Christ to the angels. It looks like in heaven, Jesus talks about us that are faithful. When we are faithful, he calls angels over and says, look at that. That is, and gives the name. And wouldn't it be interesting when we get to heaven that some angels will not know any Christians by name? Uh, angels are going to know me, not 100% of the time. Angels are going to know me by name. Hey, we've heard about you. Some Christians more better than I will, are well known among the angels. I'm not I'm not proper I'm not 100% and there are Christians who man Jesus probably brags I don't know I hate to say it, Jesus confesses to the angels about these men that are more faithful than I and he, hey I know you for me if I said hey I've heard of you and some Christians who are you Can you imagine those three aspects when we get to glory and the angels I know you I've heard of you who are you? Which one do you want? That's just as much as God saying, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Good? Jesus said there is no good. Don't call me good. Paul says there is none good. No, not one. But God can tell me good. Wow. And then walk away, have the angels talk about you when Jesus has talked about you. How about that? You know, we can talk to the angels about the redemption blood of Jesus Christ and they would learn because they don't know anything about the blood and being redeemed. You imagine having angels glorified when you love to tell the story to who? When we get to angels. Telling the angels about the day you got saved would be a wonderful story for them to hear. The Bible says in Luke chapter 15, 
when one sinner rejoices and gets right, they rejoice. They have a party. They enjoy. Imagine them hearing the story from you personally. What a day that will be when Jesus I shall see. I also say unto you, whatsoever shall confess me before men, him shall the, the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. That's an important statement. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, <clears throat> it shall be forgiven subject to Pharisees. But unto him that blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. This is when he, they said he casts out by Satan, Beelzebub. When they bring you unto the synagogues, remember he said in this chapter, he is dressing the disciples. Jesus is prophesying the ministry of these disciples in the book of Acts, and all but one, minus Judas, all but one die a severe death. John gets boiled in some, I forget what kind of liquid it was. They lose their necks, they're, they're crucified, they're pulled apart. You can find that in the book of uh, the uh, Fox's Book of Mars. He'll tell you how each of those disciples died. It's not a pleasant death. And magistrates and powers, take ye no thought on how, or what thing ye shall answer and what ye shall say. So you say, well, why do I have to memorize scripture? Why do I have to read the Bible? The Holy Spirit's going to fill my mouth. He didn't say that to you. He said it to the disciples. Because they ain't got no Bible. They can't quote Romans. They can't quote, quote Galatians. They can't quote Revelation. It hasn't been written and will not be written. We have the entire Bible. We are to memorize scripture. We are to take gospel tracts and see what scriptures are used for witnessing the people and memorize them. Yes, God will fill your mouth, but we have to study. Jesus didn't tell them to study. Paul tells us that study show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I've heard people, oh, I don't buy this verse. Well, you know, I'll just open my God and God will fill it. Yeah. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. This is inspiration. And one of the company said to him, Master, speak to my brother. That he divided the inheritance with me. Look at that. Man, he's got an important instruction about religion. A guy steps up and says, hey, I want my money. And he said, man, where did that expression come from? Man, who made, you, who made me a judge or a divider over you? <clears throat> Jesus is judge. He's a judge of all the earth. But he's not going to handle petty cases. It shows you what Jesus thinks of money. As far as his money case, hey, that's not my department. And that, in fact, is with that attitude you got, you're only going to use it for sin. And he said unto him, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not of the abundance of the things which he possesses. So when you say, that He that dies in the end with the, with the most toys wins. Luke 12, 15 destroys that stupid saying. Yeah. You ever think, oh, is there a verse in the Bible that I could, yeah, right there. And he spake a parable unto him, say, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth penance. So now, he's off the disciples. Who is this guy that came to Jesus? I want my money. <laughs> a rich man. Why would you start off with a rich man parable? If this guy was poor, he would have had a parable about a poor man. A parable saying the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiness. Successful. He thought with himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have I, 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 me, 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 my, my, me, my, mu, me. Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. He's got an abundance. So he's going to start these self-storage centers all across America. And fill them with his junk. Because he ain't got, there's no room in the garage to park his Mercedes. Or his station wagon. Or his pickup, because that's full too. 
The spare bedroom's got junk in it. The attic is full. The basement is full. To bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns. Well, that's kind of stupid. If it's so full, what are you going to do with the junk? Don't pull them down. Build something else. And build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. So it's not just fruit. Goods. Now he's selfish. Why don't you just help others with it? Aren't there people starving? Aren't there people starving over in India? It's more closer than America. And I will say to my soul. Wow, this guy really thinks he's got power, doesn't he? Soul. Yes, idiot. I mean, see, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Look, at he's talking to his eternal soul as in good. I got the most toys. See, see, it's the same reference. When I die, they're going to have a U-Haul. Take thy ease. He thinks he's going to have ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who, sh then who's, then who shall those things be which thou hast divided, provided? You can't take it with you, God said. So is he that lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God's. God. So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. That's a remarkable statement. You don't take it with you in the end. He that has the most in the end does not end up in heaven. God says and God rebukes that. 